My name is John Lindquist. Uh, I am the egghead.io guy. And I wanted to start by saying thank you all for your support in making Egghead happen. Um, it feeds my children. So um, uh, thank you for that. But I actually have about 24 minutes and 36 seconds to build an application in Angular 2, so I better get started. So this is my application over here. My criteria was it had to be really small to fit on that tiny little space of the screen. It had to use HTTP, had to use a router, had to build, have to, had to have components, all these sorts of things that I wanted to show how all the pieces of Angular 2 fit together because uh, we see so many demos and so many tiny little pieces, we don't get the bigger picture of what Angular 2 is and how it all works together. Uh, but it's also very, very simple as far as you just click on a game, you go to the cart, and you can see which game was added to your cart. It's not complex at all, um, but it's the kind of demo I'd want to see because you can, uh, I'll give you the link at the end, you can clone it, and then it just has only the pieces you need, and you can see where you could start building more. So the first question you're probably asking is, um, Hey, John, why or how, how did you get Angular 2? How did you install it? How did you download it? Um, because if you look at the Angular IO page, you see these links where you actually have to be online because it's requesting JSPM IO and all that stuff. Um, so I used JSPM, which is a package manager for both uh, NPM and GitHub, and it's a way of configuring system JS packages. So JSPM is like a sister project to System.js, and System.js is what we use to import ES6 modules. Uh, it's actually run by the same guy, Guy Bedford. His, his name is actually Guy. Uh, huge shout out to him. He does a ton of work on that stuff, and he, I think he's actually looking for a sponsor to help him work on that more full time. So um, I use JSPM. It was just, uh, I installed JSPM, then JSPM install Angular 2. It did a bit of configuration, um, which is just this config file. And then from here, um, I'm going to start working kind of forward and backward. So I loaded in system.js. I loaded in my config file. This is where JSPM configures all the different ES6 packages and what paths point to what thing. Um, so I'm going to start typing here. So when I have a script tag and I say system um, import, I'm going to import a package that's configured called app. And this is like a, a bundle or a package, which says, which is telling uh, in my configuration file, which isn't that important, but it's saying use the TypeScript compiler on this file whenever it changes, then it'll update that for me. Um, this is basically like saying import in ES6, you know, look up the app package and bring everything in. It, uh, but it's just doing it in uh, this JavaScript right here. So I'm going to start with just a loading. And once I hit save, you can see over on my screen, I get a tiny little loading message. And we're going to wrap that with a game store for our game store component. Now, that obviously added way too much stuff. So let's come in and delete pretty much everything that we have. I'm going to leave all the imports in there because I don't want to have to type all that out by hand. Um, some notes that are worthy of note. Uh, you do need an ES6 shim if you use TypeScript because uh, of the array methods coming from ES6, uh, like fill and, and those, you will need an ES6 shim. Uh, reflect metadata is another dependency that Angular 2 has, and zone is another dependency. So you gotta, those are things that, that are outside of Angular 2 that you do need to fulfill the dependencies of Angular 2. And then all this other stuff is we'll talk about soon, and I just have a server set up so that whenever I request the games from there, I'll get an array of games which I can load in. All right, so now I should have nothing. So the, the first component you create in your application is basically like a root component. Um, I'll call this guy game store. And this game store is going to be a component and he's going to have a selector of game-store. You don't have to worry about that camel casing anything or anything anymore like directives used to. 
So that's nice. And then a view, which is going to uh, have a template. And this template can be, I'm a game store. All right. So you may think now that if I hit save, um, that this would actually work. But nothing actually happens yet because we haven't gone through the bootstrapping process. Your main tag that you use is going to be treated as like the root of your application, which needs to be bootstrapped. So we have a bootstrap, which we can just drop our game store into, hit save, and now we can actually get um, I'm a game store, even though that's super tiny. You can see we have I'm a game store over there. So that's a wonderful application. Uh, but let's make it a bit nicer and add some more functionality. One, one super duper tip that I recommend everyone do if you're going to play around with the Angular 2 Alpha stuff, or even, in, uh, even later on, this bootstrap returns a promise. Uh, so if you do a then, um, you can trace the success, uh, log out the success and the errors or handle them however you want. Uh, so I definitely say, uh, because some things can fail fairly silently, um, it's pretty important to just log out a success. So console log success. And we'll just uh, duplicate this bad boy and do one of these and error. All right. Now, one thing I recommend is don't get hung up on any sort of fat arrow stuff or any sort of like one line of code that you're know, like, what's, what's going on? Stop, John. Hold on. I got to figure this all out. Um, I'm going for the bigger picture here, okay? Well, we're going to see how everything fits together. So if you're not familiar with fat arrows, don't worry about it. We're just handling success and error, just success and error handlers um, in case things go wrong. Now, in my game store, I'm going to want something in there. Well, what do I want, John? I want a list of games. So let's go ahead and create our list of games. We'll call it a game list. Now we're going to be creating a few components, and you'll see it over and over again. We have this class, then we come in and we make the component, which has a selector, and this one can be game-list. And then we have a view, which has a template. And this can be games go here. All right, now you'd think that if you just go into your, uh, into your game store and you take this template here and I just go ahead and I drop in a game-list and expand that out, that, you know, that should work. I've created two different components. I'm using one inside the other. But what happens is you'll see that loading will go away and then the screen will be, bl screen will be blank. Now, the screen being blank is always a good sign that you probably forgot to include one component as a directive in the other component. So in your view, you list out the directives you want. So the directives will drop in our uh, game list. And then once that's in there, hit save, you'll see that games go here is working. So now we have this kind of bootstrapped component, which is our main game store. And then we have a game list where we're going to load in all of our different games. Now, template URLs are supported. So let's go ahead and um, get a little bit more funky with our templates here. URL and then doo -doo -doo -doo, templates and slash game, let's see we're on store.html. Then up here as well, we'll do template uh, URL and templates game list.html. All right, so template URLs are supported just like they, they were in Angular 1. And we can go ahead and load in our game store. Um, I'm going to delete all of this stuff which we had before. We don't need our nav yet. Don't worry about that style. And I'm going to go ahead and drop in that game list. All right. 
So we have the game list, which will load in the game list, which is this guy. And in our game list, we'll just say, again, this is our div that has um, games here. All right, so one template loading in another where the components are all hooked up together. So to go ahead and get our games into our application, we can go into the game list, and we're gonna work with our first uh, service injection. So we'll say constructor, and we're going to inject the HTTP service. And to be able to use this, um, there's something called the HTTP injectables which is where all of the uh, HTTP services are configured so that you can use them. I'm gonna go ahead and inject it here in basically the, the root of my component. Um, one thing to be aware of is that with these services, they, they're passed down to the children. So this game store, this game list is inside of the game store, so because I'm injecting the injectables into the game store, game list will also have access to them. Uh, so whatever the scope of the parent is, it'll, all the ch children can inherit that same thing. So I'll go ahead and say uh, HTTP, get, and then I have that server that's listed up above, just localhost 3000 slash games. And then we'll go ahead and uh, map the response to, uh, we want to parse that out as JSON, and then we want to, uh, one thing that you all should be learning is subscribable. I'm thinking of observable in my head. Uh, one thing you should all be learning is uh, this reactive stuff that's going on where you have observables because subscribe, this HTTP stuff uses observables. So we're gonna subscribe, and the response that we get back this mapped, uh, map JSON we get back is going to be called games, which are going to pass into a function where we say this.games equals games. And we'll go ahead, because um, ES7 and TypeScript supports this member variable stuff, um, we'll go ahead and just put a member on our class there. All right, so we can list out our games in our game list. And come in here, we can say games, hit save. And now we have a wonderful list of games. Now, what do you do with a wonderful list of objects? Why you ng repeat through them, or you now ng for them. So to use ng for, um, I'll go into my game list where we're just looking. And I'll use that star ng-4 equals, and this is saying, this is a variable name of game, of games. I still type in games every time I type this out. I'm surprised I typed of that time. But it's actually of, so game of games. Um, it's gonna create this, and then we'll log out, or just render out game.name. And this is actually not gonna work. So when this refreshes, you see, oh, wait a second, it's a blank screen. What does a blank screen mean? A blank screen means that we forgot to include the directive required um, to render that out. So it's, it's kind of like that debugging, debugging by uh, omission or something, debugging by blank screen. So directive is ng4 is the one we need. And then once ng4 loads up, we get a list of all of our games. <clears throat> Now, to render out these games, I don't want uh, just a list of divs. I want kind of a, a concept of like an item renderer or these individual items that I can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and pose for the camera. And then I'm gonna type class uh, game item. And we'll create a, let's see, so this, class of game item is what we're going to render into the, so again, it's a component, it's a selector. This is one of those things you kind of get through repetition. This is the third time I've done it, so now this should be settling in that, you know, it's a class with a component and a view. Uh, so game-item and view and template. Uh, we'll just go straight, jump straight into our template URL and say templates. Uh, game dash item. 
index.html. All right, so these game items are what I'm going to use in my game list. So now this div is going to turn into uh, game dash item. All right. Now, when this refreshes, um, this is still going to be rendering out this content. And I actually need to, uh, I didn't include game item in my template. This is one of those things where the, the content shouldn't be there. And from discussing this with Igor, um, sorry, discussing this with Mishko a second ago, there is this weird thing where uh, in the injectables you do need a, uh, this is kind of like ignore me, this is alpha stuff for two seconds. Because um, this DOM strategy stuff where you have a shadow DOM strategy which you bind to a um, native shadow DOM strategy, that's going away. Um, and if you have questions, ask Mishko. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to get rid of this just to show you that in my game list, uh, so it's putting the game name inside of the game item, but nothing's rendering out. And this is where this content tag, uh, if you're familiar with transclusion, the new term to learn is reprojection. So this is being reprojected or projected it's the shadow DOM term for it, um, into my element. It just, just comes naturally. You don't have to turn it on. You just, uh, just use that content tag. But that's not the way I want to do it. I actually want to pass in some properties on my game item. So instead of uh, doing that reprojection thing, I'm going to start doing, I want to pass in, let's say, a name which is going to be the uh, game, oops, game dot name. I'm going to pass in the, I don't select that, and I'm going to pass in the thumbnail, and I'm going to pass in the uh, price. All right, and then I don't need this anymore. And the way that these properties work um, this is like setting those attributes, passing things in through the scope, uh, things you're probably familiar with in Angular 1. In my game item, your component is where you declare those things, the way that your component interfaces with other components. So we can list properties, and this is an array of name, uh, thumbnail, and price. So now those are going to go directly onto my controller so I can reference them and use them however I want. So in my game list, now it's automatically passing those guys in. So in my game item, I now have access to, I'm going to delete the content. I'm going to create a div. I now have access to name. So if I just hit save, I now get my name because it's being passed in through a property. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and render out an image, which is going to be my, uh, so here, this is one of those binding things where I want to bind the source of the image to the thumbnail. And I also want to render out the, um, let's do an H3 for the name. And I just want to render out, we'll use a nice little dollar sign and just the price. And give this a, that class of uh, game item up there just to fix some formatting. All right. So at this point, I've rendered out all of my, all of my games. Um, let's make that a bit smaller. I, I've rendered out all of my games. It shows all the titles. It shows all the prices. And the last thing to do is to start adding these guys into the game cart. So the way that you handle this sort of, um, you click on something, we can come into my game list, and I can say that any time I click, and again, the reason for these parens is can handle any sort of custom event from any sort of custom web component. Um, when I, I'll just say on game click is what I'm going to name it. 
So anytime I click on this guy, I'm going to want to take that game and then I'm going to store them into a cart service of sorts. So on my game list, I can say uh, on game click. And that'll take the game, and then I need to set up my own custom service to store things into. That's actually really easy. All I have to do is create a class. Uh, I'm going to call my class uh, cart service. And I'm just going to say, hey, store some games for me. So on my, where I inject stuff, I'm going to say, hey, use the cart service. And anyone, including my children, can share with this. Um, you could put this at any level in your application that you want to. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to inject my cart service into my game list. So cart service, cart service. And I'm going to cheat um, in TypeScript, which is the compiler I'm using. If you put public in front of something, it just automatically assigns it or attaches it onto this, so I don't have to write that out. Um, so I can say this, whoops, I can say this game, cart service, games, push game. And then that's going to push, every time I click, it's going to push a game into that service. So let's go ahead and create a cart, um, cart component to render this out. So we'll call this game cart. And again, this is a component with a selector of game dash cart and a view of oops, template URL. And that's just going to be my templates. Uh, slash game dash cart HTML. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, also inject into my game cart that same service. So cart service, cart service, and we'll say public. In this way, that cart service is in both, of, in both my game cart and my game list. So anytime something's added to the cart service here, I can also access it inside of my game cart. Now, how am I going to get to my game cart? Let's go ahead and add a route config. Um, I'm running a little short on time, so I'm going to copy and paste the route config instead of typing it out. So the route config I'm going to drop on my root component. Oops. And the, the way that this uh, route is set up, instead of the game list being my root component, I'm actually going to have a what's called a router outlet. This is somewhere for the router to drop stuff. And I'm just going to have a router outlet there, create some nav. I'll have two links, um, and these links are going to have what are called router links. Router link. Um, one is going to be, oh, it looks like I deleted that. One is going to be to home, one is going to be to uh, cart. And that's because in my main file here, I have home and cart. So when I go to home, it's going to load the game list. When I go to cart, it's going to load the game cart. Um, and the router outlet. So we got a blank screen again. What does that mean? That means that we did not add those guys to our directives. All right, so now we don't need the game list anymore because it's actually using the router outlet. And we also need that uh, router link. And I'll hit save. And router link, and I need to inject the router injectables so that I can actually use those. All right. So now my, my home route is actually loading up the game list and loading that component in. And there on my, on my game store, uh, it's loading in. Let's do. 
Where'd my links go? Oh, there's no text on the link, thank you. That makes them pretty hard to click on, I guess. Um, so home, cart, all right. And so then there's, when I click on this cart, there's gonna be nothing there, there's nothing in, nothing in the cart. And that's because in my game cart, um, I haven't set up uh, how these things work together. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, in my game cart, I have the cart service, which loads in all the games. Um, I would need the ng4 to loop through everything I, uh, loop through everything I used. So ng4, and then, um, let's see, I'm basically done here. So that when I click on stuff, click, click, um, we're, we're still empty in the cart because I didn't define that cart total, which I'll just copy and paste. Uh, cart total. This is just uh, going through and adding up the price for me. And I'll click on this, click on this, and hit cart. And you can see we got, um, we got our list of games and the total price of all the games. So the, the key takeaways of all of this is that Angular 2 is now a set of components. You have your root component, um, and the services you inject into your component can be shared across all the components that it uses. If you ever, uh, always make sure to set up a then to handle so you can get lots of uh, reporting from success and error handlers. If you ever see a blank screen, always check your directives. Uh, it probably means a directive is missing because you won't get an error, you'll just get a blank screen. Um, the router is completely different. There's a ton of things to learn off of it, uh, but the basics are that a router link can go to what you define it as, and it'll drop a component into that router outlet. Your new custom services are just basic classes which you can just use by dropping them into a constructor and sharing them across your projects. And then HTTP is a brand new service, which I'm sure we'll hear more about because it's an observable, which brings in a ton of new options as far as retrying and uh, managing data and making multiple requests and stuff like that. So there you go, that's, a, that's an application in 25-ish minutes. Um, the source code for this is available at um, this link here, GitHub John Lindquist slash speedrun. Thank you for watching and uh, have a wonderful day.